So I'm going to show you all of my calculations that I did to find it. I just have a Word file open right here. In my previous video I showed how to calculate the peak. So, because um, these two components are in series with the voltage supply, we can add um, we can add the resistance of the resistor and um, calculate the reactance of the capacitor to find the equivalent voltage. So I have the equation here. This is the capacitance, so that's where we'll put the microfarad, and then omega is um, is the uh, angular velocity. So that's calculated using this equation. It basically just means um, how fast, uh, if we were, instead of having this as a sinusoid curve, we could also picture, um, picture these oscillations as like a circle, like the with a radius just traveling about the circle. And so that would be how fast the, um, the radius would make a complete revolution around the circle. Okay? And that's me measured in radians per second. So I go through and I uh, calculate the impedance of the capacitor. This is what it would be if that were an inductor, but then. And then now we can apply the voltage divider rule. So the voltage divider rule says, um, uh, so voltage and resistance are in the same ratio as each other. So the voltage is going to divide evenly across this, um, it's going to divide in ratio of their parts. So we find the equivalent resistance of the branch and then the resistance of the part and multiply it by the whole uh, circuit. So from blue to green, that's V peak, is multiplied by um, ZC, which is red to green, over blue plus blue plus red plus red over green. I don't know if that makes sense, but so I go through and I actually, I use my calculator to uh, calculate this out, which actually accepts inputs in both um, like a Cartesian way of writing this and uh, the phaser way of writing it, which is actually, it saves a lot of time. Um, another way to solve this is just to apply Ohm's law, but um, I won't show you that. If you want, you can look at like pause and look at it. So now we have this value. So that's how much, um, this is what I expect the peak voltage across this capacitor. And this is what I expect the phase angle to be. So we'll look at this. And it doesn't uh, measure phase exactly, the oscilloscope doesn't, but there's a way that you can figure it out um, just by doing a little bit more multiplication. Okay, so I'm going to take this two axis, and this is basically a vector. You can see as I move it around here, these numbers right here are moving. And instead of just trying to find the max myself, I'm going to right click on it and then go to next um, next uh, y max value and then now I want to go to the top of the red curve so I have to first move it so that these two little dots are on there and then make sure that this is selected then right click and go to next y max so we can see right here the difference between the two the blue one is leading the red one by um, 937.5 microseconds. When I look at that, so the phase shift is in proportion to um, that time difference. So this is the period, so from 
the top of the blue circle to the top of the blue circle, if you measure that in time, that would be the period, but it's also just related to um, our frequency. So when you um, try to isolate for a change of t using this equation, I get this number, which is kind of close to that one, but maybe not close enough. Like if I'm going to do a simulation, I want it to be pretty accurate. So I'm going to um, have to turn off the simulation and I'm going to change um, the simulation step. So right now it's automatically just, it's just going to determine it how it wishes. I'm not really sure what the algorithm is, but I want it to be the max, max time step. So that's just the case, um, like, because it's a simulation, these aren't like analog sin, uh, signals. All of these signals have little uh, pieces to them. You can kind of tell because it's not a perfectly straight curve. So I'm gonna hit apply and then turn back the simulation and it's going to generate a new curve. I'm gonna press pause. And I don't know if you noticed, but this curve actually goes, it, it generates slower than the last one. All right, so I got two. I'm going to do the right click, go to max. I'm going to select the red curve and select this one and go to Y max. And we can see that it is a lot more accurate. So kind of a long video, but I wanted to make sure everything was clear. So hopefully that helps you. All right, bye-bye.